As is common knowledge by now, Apple has recently switched to using Intel chips inside of all of its personal computers. To many, this was an affirmation that the x86 architecture was superior to the PowerPC, as Apple had long been PowerPC's biggest, or at least most publicized, supporter. Although the G5 was the last computer made by Apple that used the PowerPC chip, many other devices are still using the PowerPC technology today. For instance, Microsoft's Xbox, Nintendo's Wii, and Sony's PlayStation, as well as a variety of Cisco products still employ the PowerPC processor. The fact that these various leading companies in the industry are still using PowerPC means the debate over which architecture is better wages on, and Apple abandoning the chip didn't prove anything except that Apple is switching sides. At the heart of the debate between which processor is better, the x86 or the PowerPC, is the issue of endianness. The PowerPC uses what is known as Big Endian, and the x86 uses what is known as Little Endian. I've devised a series of tests that will conclusively and scientifically tell us which one is better. In our first test, we will be looking at the stability of both Big Endian and Little Endian and see which one comes out the winner. As you can see from the results of this experiment, Big Endian and thus the PowerPC processor provides a better foundation and a more stable platform than the x86. In this experiment, we'll be taking a look at the instruction sets offered by both PowerPC and x86. As you'll notice, the x86 instructions get dropped. When talking about processors, most people focus on speed, so let's perform some speed tests on both the PowerPC and x86 processor. As you can see by the results of the industry standard spec roll rate test, the x86 way outperformed the PowerPC. But the end result was less than desirable. From the results of these tests, we can see that using Big Endian makes PowerPC a superior architecture.